Hey guys, it's Unders with another Logic tutorial. In this video, I'm going to go over the mixer and how it's laid out and how you can format it to suit yourself and set up certain things that are going to help your workflow when mixing. Let's get into that. Say my name aloud. Hello guys, so here we are in Logic. Now we're going to go over the basic overview of using the mixer in this video. If these Logic tutorial videos are helpful for you, please pop a like on the video, subscribe to the channel. If you've got any comments or you would like to see other videos, please throw those down below. So, having a look at the mixer, primarily I will work from a single window and you can work with the mixer on the same arrange page or you can have a separate window. There are two ways that we can access it primarily. We have the icon up here on the top left which shows us some faders and will show up as mixer and if we click on that it will bring up my mixer and how I normally have it in here. You can also use the shortcut key X. Now you'll notice that they're all named and colored the same as my channels here in the arrange page and there was a tutorial on coloring the tracks and how to do that side of it. You can as well have your own mixer view as a window. So if we go into window we can then do open mixer or we can do that as well with command 2. We bring that up and we can have our own mixer window like so. And you could have that completely separate. I tend to just have it in the arrange window. It's how I find best to work. Now, if you've got the inspector up here on the side, you can see that by pressing I, you'll see that this displays what you're effectively seeing here in the mixer channel. So this is like having all the inspectors loaded at once and you can then see everything that is going on in there. So navigation wise, you can have this on single, which is just going to show the thing that you've got selected, anything that's routed to and the master out option. You can have tracks, which is the main view that I will use, which will display everything that I've got set up in the arrange window, or you can have all. This will also include things like your click tracks. If you've got multi drums, um, if you've got say a contact patch that's got multiple outs and you've narrowed that down to one it will display all of these as well and then here on the right hand you can also display what is included within those things so I could turn my auxes off for example and you're not able then to see any of my auxes so that just shows you navigationally what you can narrow it down to if you just want to be working with your parts of audio you can do this so navigating around is relatively simple. Um, it changes ever so slightly per channel depending on what type of channel it is. So an audio and a MIDI channel, they respond relatively the same. Your inputs and outputs are slightly different. So on an audio channel, such as we have here, here where it's now highlighted, it will say input, whereas next to it is a MIDI channel and you'll see the input section here is where the VST is loaded. Um, this particular track is frozen, but we could have mono, stereo, left, right sound as our inputs, and that is coming from uh, the way I've got it linked up at the moment. If I was to change my audio settings input to the UAD or to a microphone, those would show up there as well. Now, right up the top, we have settings. Now, settings would be where you would load any um, chains that you keep regularly. So here you see some, I've got that I've been using recently. I've been working with Trigger, which is this track here. I've been working with another guy called Warren. I've got their vocal chains up there. So when they're sending me vocals, I'm opening the tracks. I can just put that chain straight on because I know where they've recorded and it's going to get me roughly to the point that I need to be without having to mess around too much. I can just click and load that chain. So that's a really useful thing to have from there. You'll see I've done that with my sub just next to it here, which is one that I uh, have preloaded from MIDI tracks. Um, coming down from here, if we click on this bar here, this will automatically introduce a compressor for us. And if we and if we automatic if we click uh, just below here, sorry, that's going to automatically introduce an EQ for us. And this EQ thumbnail is really useful. It will show us any EQ that's happening on this particular channel EQ. So if we shrink this down, 
perhaps we will roll off some low end for example and you can see that's then represented in here that's only rep represented when you are using the channel eq and above will represent the gain reduction from the compressor as well so that can be quite useful if you're using the stock plugins just below here where we've got the input section this is where we'll be loading any plugins that we're using on this track and it will progress in size depending on how many you've got loaded if we go to the far right here we'll see that i've got uh, big chains loaded which is why this is such a large area this is relatively simple click on and you can navigate through what you want i've done a tutorial on making a custom plugin list so you can have lists like this which contain multiple plugins for a particular thing that you use regularly my master bus one for example uh, it's got all the plugins that I'd regularly use on my auxes and two buses. Okay, coming further down, we've then got the bus section. That's the little section here and then a wheel next to it. You'll see that these are greyed out because it's not being bussed anywhere. However, this one here goes off to bus seven. We can click and hold and see different um, types, whether it's post pan, post fader, pre fader, no send. And you can also see bus seven that's called wide aux and that's where that lands. And then this is the amount knob next to it. If you click onto it, the bus name will change to the amount value you've got sending there. And then you can also see it is labeled here, bus three and where it's going to. And that's where the whole channel is being sent to. This is an auxiliary bus. This is where everything is being bussed to. So bus seven is the wide aux, which is an effect. And bus three is the bus for the instruments and where they are going. Below that is a group. Now this is automation groups. So if you want to group multiple things together and automate the faders and panning, etc., that is how you would link those together there. Below here is then our automation types. And there is a video already on different automation types. Here is an image of whatever is displayed um, in the a range window, however you've labeled that. I tend to just use the defaults. Uh, it's not something I use too much. Below that is your panning. Now there's three different panning modes in Logic. If you right click, you've got stereo pan, balance and binaural. There will be videos on all of those, including a nice in-depth tutorial on the binaural panning. Then below here are our readouts for the particular tracks. On the left is how much gain or reduction has been applied by the fader. And on the right is the peak level based on the audio. I've just uh, erased all those by clicking. If we now play some audio, we will see those peak levels come back. Go on, that will display our peak levels so we can see where everything's sitting in relation to the gain reduction or boost that has been applied regardless. Coming down from that, we've got our mute and solos. They can be triggered with some nice shortcuts of just M and S respectively. Below we've got the naming. This will respond to whatever you have named them in the arrange window. Now there are some other things we can add into the mixer as well. If we right click, we can do channel strip components and something that's really useful is track notes. This will add something below where you can double click and you can add mix notes. It's super useful if you're sending a track off to someone else or if you know there's going to be a long pause for you working on a track. I will quite often add mix notes in here for particular channels, um, especially when it comes down to vocals. If I've got a particular piece of a vocal that's not sounding correct, for example, and uh, I don't have the audio to fix it, I need to speak to the person who sent me their audio or whatever has gone on i will just note it in there note exactly where it is so when i come back to it and change it or they've sent me new stems i know what it is i'm fixing and why um, some other parts that are also useful are vcas there's a tutorial going up on the vcas as well and if you've got a particularly busy mix track numbers but i tend to just go for coloring and i know my groups based on my colors roughly where i am Guys, I hope this video was helpful for you. In the next one, we're going to go into the buses and auxiliaries in more detail. So I will see you on the next video.